It's really important for us to define some terms, especially two you'll hear a lot of, pronation and supination. The most important thing to understand is that these terms are a description of movement and they are completely normal. In fact, it's impossible to walk or run without pronation and supination occurring. Understanding these terms is really very simple. Pronation means the foot rolls in toward the ground at the joint immediately below the ankle. Pronation allows the foot to be a loose, mobile structure at heel contact. This is important to help dissipate some of the shock of full body contact and also to compensate for any variation in terrain. Supination means the foot rolls out away from the leg, again at the joint below the ankle. Supination transforms the foot into a stiffer structure and without it, the foot cannot achieve enough rigidity to become a strong lever for forward movement. That's it, pretty easy to understand. Let's talk about gait. Gait is divided into swing, when the foot is airborne, and stance, when it's in contact with the ground. The stance phase of gait has three phases, heel contact, mid stance and propulsion. Let's begin by looking at heel contact. The foot usually, but not always, strikes on the outer aspect of the heel. Be aware though that there's considerable variation from runner to runner and the range of normal is quite broad. Immediately after the foot makes contact with the ground, it pronates and this pronation makes the leg bone rotate inwards. At heel strike, the first big peak in impact forces occurs, and this is usually quoted at about three times the body weight on level ground, and much higher for running up and downhill. This is possible because the entire body weight is being dropped from a height onto the support surface. As the foot pronates during heel strike, it functions as a mobile adapter to compensate for terrain inconsistencies. So contact is all about cushioning and adaption, and mid-stance is all about stability. Mid-stance starts when the forefoot makes contact with the support surface. There's only one foot in contact with the ground, the other has commenced its swing phase. At this time, the foot is bearing all of the body's weight, so the demand for a very stable platform is very high, and weight distribution should be shared evenly, especially across the ball of the foot. Mid-stance is the phase of gait where things can and often do go wrong, and it's arguably the time when injury is most likely to occur. During mid-stance, the feet stop pronating and begin supinating. This transition from pronation to supination gradually converts the foot from a shock-absorbing, mobile structure to a much more stable entity, because it now needs to function as an effective lever rather than a shock absorber. The foot is now prepared for the final phase of stance, propulsion. Propulsion commences the instant the heel leaves the ground, and by now, the demand is for pure power. The foot has to be quite rigid in order to effectively propel the body weight forward. Continued supination of the foot maintains this lever action. During propulsion, the impact forces peak for the second and even more intense time. A complex sequence of events allows the entire body weight to shift from the outside of the forefoot to the big toe. Imagine the stress at this time, the whole body weight being propelled forward by one tiny toe, an engineering masterpiece. So, that is how we move. This is the normal sequence of events that is so powerful and so unique. The neutral runner needs balance in their footwear. There's no real bias towards cushioning, no real bias towards stability, just a healthy dose of both. Always remember, the weight of the athlete plays a big role in shoe selection. The heavier the athlete, the more they're able to distort the shoe, and the greater the forces involved. There are two main categories of biomechanical abnormality that have been the focus of footwear design for some time. The overpronator and the underpronator. Some runners have too much pronation, or more importantly, they pronate at a time when they should not. For many years, the focus of attention has been on rear foot over pronation. But we now understand that pronation during the heel strike phase of stance is very normal and in many ways very helpful. Contact phase pronation helps with shock dissipation and terrain variance. 
Of particular concern is the athlete who is still pronating during the mid-stance phase of gait. Because as we have seen, this is a time when the progression is from contact pronation to propulsive supination. A time when stability is required and a pronated foot is inherently unstable. During mid-stance the foot should be supinating. If it is still pronating, overload may occur and this may lead us down the path of injury. So let's have a look at the two main types of overpronator. The rear foot overpronator and the midfoot overpronator. Then let's match the right shoe to these foot types. There are many reasons why an athlete might be a rear foot overpronator. Bow legs. Excessive bowing of the legs changes the way the foot and leg relate and can often lead to quite significant overpronation. Out toed gait. This leads to the center of body weight falling inside the foot. Gravity then does the rest, making the foot overpronate. But the important thing to remember is that rear foot pronators need the footwear pendulum to swing in the direction of stability and away from the direction of cushioning. The second category of overpronators are the midfoot overpronators. These individuals are a little trickier to identify because often the degree of abnormality is quite subtle and is not at all identifiable by looking at the rear foot. The midfoot overpronator has an abnormality of timing. In other words, this athlete pronates during the mid-stance or even propulsive phases of gait, a time when supination, not pronation, should be occurring. This completely upsets the rhythm of gait and may lead to increased loading on muscles, tendons, ligaments and bone. And so the current thought is that in relation to injury, a midfoot pronator may be much more important than a rearfoot overpronator. To identify the midfoot overpronator, focus on the mid-stance phase of gait. Look for features like arch lowering and deviation of the forefoot on the rear foot. We call this the too many toes sign because when viewed from behind, you can see too many toes. This is a key feature of these athletes and indicates a real discrepancy of the timing of pronation. The other major biomechanical abnormality is the underpronator, sometimes called the supinator. This gait type's a lot less common than the overpronator, but these athletes do have their own unique problems. Look for features like increased arch height and great rigidity. The underpronating or supinated athlete has issues often associated with increased shock transmission to the lower limbs. If there's not enough pronation, too much shock may be transmitted throughout the musculoskeletal system. In addition, the supinated foot is a rigid foot designed for the propulsive phase of gait and too much rigidity during heel contact and mid-stance may lead to shock-related injury. 